Hello, today I'm going to talk about visualizing the research ecosystem of neuroscience research via Wikidata, or in other words, how to explore neuroscience related linked open data, especially through a tool called Scolia that is available under this URL scolia.toolforge.org. Um, this presentation is available on Zenodo and it also gives you a few examples of visualizations that have been generated using the tool that help visualize the landscape of neuroscience research. So let's go through the different parts of this um, one by one. Um, first, the kind of profiling that we're doing here is a mechanism by which we have collected a set of questions that you might have about a certain element of the research ecosystem in neuroscience. So this might be a research topic, an article, a researcher, a clinical trial, a gene, a protein, or a biological pathway, things like that. Then uh, we have collected a set of questions that would be interesting for an entity of a particular kind. We have translated those questions into queries to a database. And then uh, we render the results that we get from the database. The database in question here is Wikidata, which is collaboratively curated. It's a community platform. And um, it has also been referred to as the edit button of the semantic web because uh, it allows essentially anyone to contribute to the semantic web. Um, it is one of the largest public knowledge graphs. It currently has over 90 million entries with over 11 billion statements about them. It's still far from complete, um, but anyone can contribute and make it more complete in a certain area. There are about 20,000 users a month that do this, which means that the platform is growing quickly. All of the data in Wikidata is available under CC0, so it's in the public domain. The platform is also multilingual and cross-disciplinary, and it meets the criteria of the FAIR data principles, which means it is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable for humans and machines. It is part of the Wikimedia ecosystem, that is, it is a sister project to Wikipedia and is integrated with Wikipedia and the other sister sites. It's also used by major search engines and many other tools. So, how is neuroscience covered or how are neurosciences in general covered? That is actually a bit hard to estimate because uh, there have not been concerted efforts specifically for the neurosciences. But the neurosciences overlap with lots of other fields where there have been concerted efforts. That includes genetics, taxonomy, clinical trials, uh, cell types, and a number of other things. Um, Wikidata has about 8,000 properties that can be used to describe uh, the entries. And depending on whether it's a cell type or um, a signal molecule or a pathway, uh, the properties that you would use to describe them are different. And um, altogether, the statements add up to those 11 billion. But that includes many things that are not neuroscience because the platform is cross-disciplinary. So you might find galaxies there or uh, soccer matches or books. Uh, on uh, of poems or things like that, but there is a significant portion um, of neuroscience in there as well, and I'll give a few examples. Then the uh, other thing to keep in mind is that Wikidata is integrated with thousands of other databases, which means you can also use it for um, identifier hopping, basically for converting identifiers between different databases or database systems. So how does it work on a technical level? Scolia is a web service written in Python. It's served via Flask and it renders the results um, of Sparkle queries to the Wikidata query service. 
all of this um, happens on the fly. The code for this is uh, open, it's available on GitHub, all the data and Wikidata is open source. And now let's have a look at a few of these uh, profiles. Um, before we look at individual ones, uh, some more thoughts on how they're interconnected. Because we're talking linked open data here, this means that if we have a, uh, an entry, for instance, for a biological pathway, um, it will have um, statements about which molecules are involved in the pathway, um, which means that the uh, pathway will show up on the profile for the molecules. Um, likewise, if there is, for instance, a journal article, then it will have statements as to which journal it was um, published in, or who the authors were, or what the topic was. And if there is an entry for the authors, then there might be a statement uh, about what their affiliation is. And so you can combine this in those Sparkle queries such that information about the author is also visible um, in the item about the journal or uh, in the item about the topic that the author has worked on. And the kinds of things that you can visualize uh, are rather diverse. So you can look at the neuroscience research ecosystem by person, by institution, by individual works, or uh, by journal, by events, and by chemicals, chemical classes, protein, gene, and a number of other things. So now let's zoom in on some of those. For this I'm opening the tool live. You see these are live queries. Here is a profile for a topic. Um, and while this loads, I'll go back and load another one. So here this one loads more quickly. It is about a particular clinical trial. So you have some metadata about the trial, how many people have participated, what the medical condition is that it targets, then uh, what the interventions are that are being tested, the place where it is being run. Uh, it gives you related trials. So this is uh, a simple um, mechanism or simple profile. A more elaborate profile is, is this one here on a topic. So first you see like the Zika virus um, in context. It has, for instance, the effect of Zika virus infections. And of course, those can lead to microcephaly. And so th that gives you a, a very first look at the kind of information that are in the database about the virus. Then here uh, we get a list of recent publications on the topic and also um, with some annotations as to what the topics are. Um, then we get a timeline of publications per year. So uh, we see that there was a very clear um, change in interest uh, at the beginning of 2016 when that was the previous public health emergency. Um, and the, the interest is now declining um, there's also an, a reverse timeline, so we can have a look at the first papers. And then all these things are linked, so we can also compare different topics, for instance. So we can click on this. That gives us a list of works where these different topics are combined. Um, and then people who have published on these topics, things like that. The authors who have been publishing on the, on the topic are being highlighted along with the networks of their core authors. Then the topics that co-occur with a particular topic, um, they are highlighted here and each of those can be browsed then individually. Uh, here is the network of those topics. Some of those topics also have geolocations, so we can plot them on the map. 
then for the authors we can include not just the amount of publications they have but also uh, the citations to and from um, publications on a topic. Here's the same information in tabular again. Uh, importantly there is uh, a possibility to look at um, data that we know is missing. Then here is uh, a list of uh, the journals that mostly publish on this topic, the most cited papers, most cited authors on the topic, and also a map of organizations uh, that have been publishing papers on the topic or whose affiliated authors have been publishing papers on the topic. Um, then on that basis we can build a country level citation graph and at the end you get a list of awards that have been given to people who have been publishing on the topic. So then now as, as will, let's have a look at some of the information that we know that is missing. So here we have a number of author name strings that uh, have been found on papers and they have not yet been converted to entries about who the actual author is because there might be multiple people with uh, this author name string. Um, yeah, some of the other profiles that I have chosen here are articles and researchers. And so here the important thing about the article profile, let's do that quickly, is that uh, it also provides you with a list of statements in the database that are supported by this particular paper. So that's kind of a, an in interesting measure of impact. Here we have 16 statements that um, are in the database and directly supported by this particular paper. And uh, so I think that is a more direct measure of impact than some of the measures that are more widely used nowadays. The other uh, profiles here, yeah, a biological pathway, uh, a journal, a researcher. The, I encourage you to explore these things via the copy of this presentation. And yeah, I'm interested in feedback. Thank you very much.